Hi everyone, thank you for joining our architecture, design, structural engineering, construction management and quantity surveying live q and I'm going to now hand it over to Carolyn to answer any of your questions. Hello, welcome to our virtual open evening. Um, it's good to, to meet you all as such. <laughs> uh, my name is Carolyn Haynes. I'm a section manager here at the Stevenson's campus of the SMB group. Um, I am going to talk to you this evening about the course that you are uh, looking at. Um, it's pathways, it's career options um, and how it's really going to um, inspire you to to join. Be part of our family. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the campus first. So the Stevenson's campus was opened in 2005. Um, it was slightly smaller at that point than what it is now. Um, we subsequently started on our extension, which included the addition of Cluster 8, Cluster 4 and um, George's, which is our far end canteen. Um, the college is essentially one long corridor. And as you walk down the corridor from the um, entrance, you have the theory delivery on the right hand side and the practical workshops on the left hand side. There are lovely canteens at both ends of the building which serve hot and cold food uh, and there are also vending machines there so you can get a snack if you need to um, during the actual college day as well. Um, all the staff are extremely friendly. Anybody with an SMB group staff lanyard on you can approach. If you get lost then you can speak to them. Um, the courses that we're talking about tonight are obviously the higher education courses. So we're talking about the HNC and the HND in construction. Um, and there are numerous different pathways to um, to this this particular provision and also numerous different career options for you. Um, so we'll start with both the HNC and the HND um, on regards to the length of the course. So both courses are delivered on a block release basis. Um, at the college, you will be given a team of lecturers because this is a higher professional qualification. We have specialists delivering on different units. So where you might have been used if you've done course in the past to having one lecturer, you will have numerous lecturers, which is actually great because it means that you get numerous different people to support you. Um, so the, currently there's a team of four that teach on this um, particular qualification. They are all experts in their field. Um, they have developed some excellent online um, classrooms, which you may find yourself party to um, as you go through your particular course. So both courses are assessed through um, coursework. Um, you will complete assignments which is why maths and English is particularly um, useful for these courses. We do have entry requirements, so you will need to have maths and English and three of the GCSEs at grade C or above. Um, this will allow you to put your maths and English into context with regard to the HNC and the HND. Um, Are you really recording? <laughs> um, during the course, obviously as well, we don't just look at knowledge. We're looking at knowledge, skills and behaviours. So the knowledge side you will uh, get from the college, we will teach you all the knowledge that you need, uh, whether it be virtual classroom or face to face classroom. We will also teach you the behaviours that you need to be able to work in industry. Now this course or these courses um, open up a lot of different doors for you. If you do the construction management pathway, you've got the option of uh, a job role of assistant design coordinator, uh, design and build coordinator, a site supervisor, a design technician, site manager, project manager, health and safety manager and planning supervisor. That is a lot of options for you to choose from once you've done that particular pathway. Architectural technology, again, you can be an architectural technologist, a drafts person, uh, an information manager or a designer, or you could go down the civil engineering site, which seems to be a bit more hands on on site. 
uh, a site engineer, structural engineer, um, or you can be quantity surveyor. So you can be the person in front that's in charge of all the money. Yeah, so you'll do the procurement, you'll do the tendering, and you'll basically hold the purse strings, which is quite a nice role to be in. Um, all the roles, the, the courses that you're doing could lead to employment within um, both the commercial sector or the house building sector. And that's because all of these roles that you can um, take from HNC or HD are transferable to both commercial and domestic building sites. Um, part of the course, you will learn about health and safety on site, which is crucial. You will learn about surveying if you are going into um, civil engineering or quantity surveying. You will learn about sustainability. And when we talk about sustainability, this is a big government agenda. It's about building in a better environment. So we're talking about reducing carbon emissions. We're talking about reducing non-recyclable waste. Um, we're talking about reducing the use of um, products that have to go to landfill as opposed to being recycled. Construction is quite a large um, area. We deal with commercial buildings, which we're talking about supermarkets, um, office blocks, railway stations, railway lines, um, airports, and then you've got your domestic side, which we're talking about your, your house builders, you know, people that build houses for us to live in. Um, and that all falls under these HNC, HND qualifications. Um, there is a, a numerous units that are core units, depending on whatever pathway you go to. Core units are um, an individual project. So you will be tasked to find something of interest and de devise a project around that. Now, a couple of examples for that that I've seen in the past is one student um, decided to look at solar powered uh, traffic lights, which was quite interesting. Another student looked into motorway repair. So when a motorway needs to be repaired, obviously it takes a lot of um, highway maintenance. They have to close the motorway. They have to get lots of vehicles in. This particular learner, his project was on interlocking precast motorway um, pieces. So the idea is that if he needed to shut a motorway, it would take about two hours to go in, close the motorway, chop out the damaged part and then put the interlocking pieces together, a bit like Lego, I suppose. So there's been lots and lots of innovative um, ideas over the years, and some of these have actually won awards, which we always push our students to, to strive for. Um, one learner in particular um, actually won an award um, for the Institute for Chartered building, civil engineering, building, structural engineering. Um, it was a female student, which was um, even even better for us as a diverse college. Um, we also had a young man who also won the award the following year, um, following on from some research he did on soil geology. That was quite interesting at the time. I was party to his research and spent quite a lot of time standing holding a fire extinguisher. So we are very supportive of your projects at the Stevenson's campus. You will learn about construction technology. So construction technology is, is quite diverse. We obviously start with the substructure and the substructure is anything below ground level. So we're talking about um, the foundations or the piles that the superstructure, anything above ground level, will sit on. Now there's various different substructures that need to be used and you will be, during your HNC, HND, responsible for identifying which one needs to be used for the superstructure that you're putting on top. But you'll also learn about the soil and the concrete that you need to develop to allow the superstructure to stand on top. 
Um, you learn about the science of materials. So you learn about the, uh, the different types of materials used within construction um, to allow you to, when you do your CAD designing, computer aided design, to design your own building, you'll know what materials will, um, will sustain what weight, what materials will sustain different elements, um, what materials are easy to source or difficult to source. So when you're doing your course, you've got to consider timber, for example, not all timber is easily sourced within the United Kingdom. Obviously, you've then got to consider where you're going to source that timber. How are you going to import it into the UK? And actually, how good for the environment is that going to be? You know, is that going to add to our carbon footprint as opposed to reduce the carbon footprint? During your HNC, HND, you'll also look at construction practices and management. Um, management is crucial in construction. You need somebody as a leader that can look at the full picture. You need to be able to see what your um, excavation team is doing and what your um, building team are doing. You will manage numerous different trades. You will manage the ground workers who do the foundations. You will manage the labourers who clean up the site. You will manage the bricklayers, the carpenters, the roofers, the electricians, the plumbers. So you've got to have a grasp on all of those different trades in order to be able to manage them. You don't have to have a qualification in all those trades. I just need to make that clear. But you need to have an understanding of what their role is as a site manager in this industry. But not just as a site manager, as a, an estimator, as an architect, as a, a quantity surveyor, you need to have an understanding of those areas. Um, you will also look at your legal and statutory regulations for being in this environment um, and on this course. Um, you need to know the detail of the law. Law is key. If you don't follow the law, then you could potentially end up with a lawsuit against your company in the future. So we will teach you how to make sure you stay within the, the constraints of the law. Um, and also to identify when maybe issues are occurring and foresee them in the future. You'll also learn about actually drawing um, a building and buildings through our CAD um, programmes. You'll, you'll learn about the detailing of a building. So you, you'll learn where to put a window, what type of roof to put on. Do you need additional doors? You'll learn how to write a specification now, a specification comes from the drawing. The specification is the exact detail of how your tradespeople on site need to build your design. You'll learn about the tendering and procurement process. Even if you don't end up going down that pathway, you will still learn about it. And then there's obviously numerous different um, pathways that you might go down with regards to the HNC and the HND depending on what job role you would like to go in in the future. Um, we've got optional units. You have to do two optional units. So the six core mandatory units you must achieve, and they're the ones that I've just spoken about. And then there's two optional units that you have to do. Um, so you might do surveying, you might do tendering, you might do BIM, which is building information modelling. You might do principles of refurbishment, because within construction, the built environment, we may have all these new modern day products and, and buildings going up, but we can't forget about the places like Windsor Castle, you know, um, Belver Castle, the places that they are have been here for years and they need to be maintained. And so these job roles also incorporate those kind of areas. Um, so you will have a diverse career depending on which pathway you go down regardless. As an architect, you might go to a listed building and the, the owner wants you to um, create an, an extension. You would then have to look at all the legislation involved with that. You'd have to look at the building materials involved with that and come up with a design that blends in with that particular environment. Um, you also have to consider the wildlife 
and the area that you're in. So for example, if you've got a big oak tree in a field, you can't just cut it down. You know, it will have a tree preservation order on it. You will have to look at how you can design your um, your building around that particular tree. It's been there that long. You can't just dig it up and move it somewhere else. Uh, animals, wildlife also you need to consider. When you're um, looking to put a building up and again, we'll teach you all of these aspects. Um, the teaching will be predominantly theory based. There are a couple of units that are hands on, so surveying um, the science materials where you learn about different soils. You'll also do concrete testing, so you'll get to build a concrete block and then you'll get to crush it. But you won't just build one, you'll build three or four different concrete blocks that are not necessarily made correctly. And then when you crush them, you will see why concrete has to be of a certain tensility. Because if it's not right, then the building will not stay upright. Um, we will learn about public um, health and their involvement in the building process. So people will voice concerns if you have created a design that they don't like in their particular area. Um, everything has to go through um, a planning permission stage where meetings are held to allow people to oppose what you want to build. And they're the kind of things that you have to then be able to adapt and, and um, consider. Obviously, during the build stage, we will be teaching you about um, the sustainability of the local community. So if you've got a site and you're expecting to have 20 concrete trucks turn up on site within a three day period, how are you going to maintain the clean cleanliness of the local community? So you have to consider having um, wheel washes on site so that the trucks drive through almost like a big shower before they leave. You have to consider hiring a road sweeper that will work on a regular basis to keep that local environment down and keep the dust down. We'll teach you about having to dampen down the actual site to reduce the dust that you are creating. So where could the courses lead you? OK, so we'll start with a HNC. So if you complete a HNC, you can move on to a HND. It's quite simple. And again, it's it's all progressing your career. Yeah, if you then go on and complete a HND, you can go on to complete a degree, a, a degree, a construction foundation degree at university. But of course, at any point of these courses, if you find a sponsor or somebody to take you on as apprentice, we can transfer you to an apprenticeship. Part of the HND is that you need to have a sponsor. So you do need to find an employer that will allow you to have some on site experience. So that means working for them. Yeah. Um, to actually get that hands on experience. Um, you will be doing assignment writing and you will be submitting that through a system called Turnitin. Now Turnitin is quite strict. If you meet, if you miss your deadlines, then your assignments will be automatically referred. Both HNC and HND are graded on a pass, a merit or a distinction. So if you push yourself and we push you, which we do to all of our students, we are aiming for you to get a distinction. However, you may not. So you need to prepare yourself for that. Can you help me out? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I think we've just got time for one more question. So is there any sort of equipment that I need to buy any books or pens or any sort of um, guides that I might need? OK, so to start with, um, you need to bring a folder, a pen, lots of pens, highlighters, um, some lined paper with you and and a memory stick. That's what you need. Um, we'd highly recommend that you invest in as a minimum a tablet or a MacBook because we may revert to doing some online lessons, but also you want to do some coursework outside. You'll get homework, so you need to be able to do that. Um, with regard to practical equipment, 
Uh, no, we provide all of the surveying equipment. We provide all of the soil testing and the concrete testing equipment. We've got a lab at the uh, Stevenson's campus that will be used. Um, you may have to, as your course progresses midway through the first year, have to buy a pair of safety boots um, to allow you to follow the on-site requirements of um, the careers that you're looking into. Um, you can pick up a pair of decent safety boots for about £20-25. Pounds. OK, everyone, I think that's the end of the session. If you have any further questions, I'll just pop it in the live Q&A section. And um, you can also apply now directly on our website. All the information can be found in the live Q&A section. We also have our Stevenson campus tour this Saturday, 14th of August. So if you'd like to have a look around our amazing facilities in person, do visit our website and register your place. We'd like to say a huge, huge thank you to Carolyn and thank you to everyone for joining our live Q&A today. Enjoy the rest of our virtual open evening and we really hope to see you soon. Take care everyone, bye-bye.